While it may not be quite as beastly to cold start as the Tuono V4, the WR250X still sounds pretty good. Hi, I'm Chad, and welcome back to another Motor Vlog. Today I am back on my Yamaha WR250X for the first time in a long time in the vlogs. So if you're new to the channel, hi, I'm Chad, and I love motorcycles. In addition to this 2009 Yamaha WR250X California Black Edition, I also have a 2017 Aprilia Tuono V4 1100 factory and a 2012 Triumph Daytona 675R race bike that I club race. But if you've been with the channel for a while, you'll know that back in October of 2021, I looped this bike doing a wheelie like a dummy. And outside of my breakdown video of looping the bike, I don't think I've featured this thing on the channel since or done any rides on it. So I've been doing a little bit of work on the thing. I got it back to roadworthy following the crash pretty quickly afterwards, I think actually, within a, within a month for sure. I busted up my right thumb too when I crashed, so that prevented me from riding for just a few weeks. Got back to it. Thumb's still not 100%, but I'd say it's probably like 90. I need to go do some physical therapy. But anyways, I have been doing a bit of work on the WR, just trying to get it ready for 2022. Okay, it's clear now. Maybe you can see the snow on the mountains. It's a little bit better in between those trees. Oh, there we go. Right up over the hill there. Man, I wish the GoPro would just be like my eyes. I wish you all could see this the way that I do. It's gorgeous. But yes, I've been taking steps towards getting the WR ready for 2022. Mostly because I want to start taking this thing to the go-kart track to practice off race weekends. But also because I just want to enjoy it and feel comfortable and confident on it. Use the virtual copy of this to practice more wheelies and demonstrate that I can do those responsibly without looping my bike. So I bought this bike back in April of 2021 following the sale of my 2017 Aprilia Tuono V4 1100RR which I purchased my Tuono V4 factory to replace. Thanked some of the money from the proceeds of that sale and went and bought this with the rest. It's been a fun bike. I haven't really ridden it that much. I don't even think I put a thousand miles on it. It's basically only existed in virtual reality for wheelie practice and a couple other short rides. But despite only making about 30 horsepower, it's actually a really fun bike to ride. I would say it's like the sillier motorcycle equivalent of a Miata. Not very fast, but capable of many good times. When I bought this bike, it was in need of a little bit of TLC. It needed an oil and a filter change, needed new tires. Other than that, it seemed good to go. I've uncovered, naturally, being that it's a 12-year-old motorcycle, possibly 13 years old at this point, but being an older motorcycle, through riding this bike here and there, I have noticed that there are a couple of other areas where it needs some love. And in the time that I haven't been riding this bike, I've been working on addressing this. I repaired most of my crash damage from looping the bike. It really wasn't that hard to do. I needed a new fender eliminator kit, so I got one. I needed a new tail light, turn signals, the bracket to hold the license plate, all that good stuff. Easy to come by. The tail fairing was a little bit scraped, but the plastic that had been burned off of it burned up onto the edges, so I just trimmed it with a razor blade and popped it back so that it was flat again like it was supposed to be. Haven't done anything about the exhaust cap and tip. They got rashed just a little bit. I'll probably fix those later on, but I figure just at the risk of me still learning how to do virtual wheelies on this thing and the possibility of looping the bike again wouldn't make a lot of sense to buy a nice new carbon fiber end cap and a new spark arrestor only to have to replace them again. Subframe appears to be straight. It doesn't feel any different. The bike doesn't ride any different than it did prior to the loop. So we were about all good there. Just, again, she's a little bit rashed up. I'll pull over in a minute and show you the bike so that you can just walk around and actually visualize everything that I talk about. But there is still some rash to the bike. Again, figure that stuff's just cosmetic and there's not really any sense in fixing it at this point in time when I'm still learning on it. So it's gonna be what it's gonna be for now. I did replace the shift lever actually too. The original one on the bike got bent 
when the bike fell on its left side following the front wheel bouncing on the ground following the tail scrape. I bent it back so that it functioned, but it just was not working right. It was at a really weird angle. I had to bend it even a little bit further back just to help it clear the stator cover. So I picked up a used one for 30 bucks on eBay. Well worth it in my book. Bike feels a lot better to shift now. I'm happy with my purchase. But following the repair of the crash damage, I finally replaced my tires, so I've got a new set of the Dunlop Q3 Plus tires, front and rear. In a 110-70-17 front, and a 140-70-17 rear. Well, they go over on the side kind of okay too, how about that? Whee! Ah, beautiful afternoon, early evening for a ride. But the new tires are on the bike. I think I'm finally approaching about 100 miles with them, so they should be about good to go here and scrubbed in. Although I very easily could have just thrown them on my tire warmers to take care of that process. But I figure I should only do that if I'm going to go to the racetrack which I haven't yet, or the cart trap. But again, coming real soon, coming real soon. So the tires are fresh, bike already feels miles better than it did before. I waited to change the tires because initially I wanted to get the last little bit of virtual life out of those virtual tires. Because all I was doing was going back and forth at a maximum speed of about 30 miles per hour doing wheelies and stoppies. So don't really need a lot of grip on the side of the tire for that and really not much in the middle on a small light bike like this either. So just didn't worry about that and got as much life out of those as possible. But I feel much more confident and comfortable now that I have the Q3 Pluses. I always toned it down extra and took things nice and slow if I was going out and riding outside of virtual reality in the wheelie spot. But she's quite nice now. The other item that I addressed recently was the clutch. In my previous videos, you probably saw me attempt to do second gear clutch up wheelies a couple times and not really have any luck with it. And part of that was because the clutch would slip as I was popping it or popping the lever. So I ordered a new clutch kit from Barnett Clutches, installed a new clutch pack, although I suspect I probably didn't need to do that because the plates that came out of the bike were actually looking in pretty good shape. I just figured I bought the kit. This bike is going to be ridden. I may as well just put the kit in since I have it all apart. I also changed out the clutch springs, which I think were the primary issue there. The springs that came out of the bike were noticeably shorter or like more compressed with no load on them than the springs that I had with the Barnett clutch kit. Got all that stuff in there. Just been riding the bike. Clutch holds really nice so far. And I've tried to pop a second gear clutch up wheelie or two in virtual reality, of course. And it's actually come off the ground a little bit. So that's been nice. Perhaps we'll have to duck into virtual reality in a bit so that I can demonstrate. Isn't this a nice, beautiful little Christmas town? So quaint. The tires and clutch are good. I also cleaned my brake caliper on the front wheel, scrubbed the pistons, got a bunch of dirt and crud and debris that had built up over time off of there. So my pistons move a lot better now. So the front brake on this bike has, if I had to guess, two to three times the stopping power that it did before between the new sticky front tire and the better moving brake pistons. So I'm quite happy with things so far. And again, very much looking forward to getting this bike out to a cart track and practice some more wheelies on it. It's going to be fun. But anyways, how about I take a little stop so we can just walk around the bike for a moment. Put some visuals to the things I have just described. All right, so here she is. Got those brand new Dunlop Q3 Plus tires that are a little bit dirty because it's a little bit dirty back here. That little bit of dirt makes her look even more like a proper supermoto though. Really just need a kicker in it. 
that Q3 Plus rear tire as well. I'd show you the new clutch pack, but it's already in there and covered up, and I'm not going to take it apart again if I don't have to. So, sorry about that. So, the couple things that I still need to address. First, this is driving me crazy, but uh, the clutch lever. Notice how it doesn't really snap back super strong. Both with my Tuono and my Daytona, the clutch will move quicker than your hand almost. Like your fingers can barely escape it snapping back when you release it. But this, it's much lazier. The new clutch springs and playing with the adjustment definitely helped a bit. But I suspect there's still a little bit of cleaning or something that I could do to make it move a little bit more freely. I figure that'll help me pop wheelies too, so we'll do that. The only other thing is that I have an exhaust leak. It took me a while to notice this, but one day I was just sitting in traffic, light to light, and my right leg started getting really hot while I had a, my foot covering the rear brake and stopped. So I came back and I noticed that you can see right here in the header to the slip-on doesn't quite fit. So this is an FMF Mega Bomb header paired with a Yoshimura RS4 slip-on, I believe. And the FMF header, the Mega Bomb, is designed to be a direct fit for an FMF slip-on. So a previous owner put this setup together, doesn't quite fit right, and the FMF header is not cut from the factory for like an exhaust clamp or anything like that. So I bought a pipe expander off of Amazon that I'm going to try to use, or I might just take it to a shop and see if they can just blow it up. Or, depending on the price of that carbon fiber end cap and the spark arrester, and what I need to do to re-rivet it, I might just buy an FMF slip-on. Although I do love the look of the Yoshi. It looks way cleaner, I think. More classy and suiting of the bike. But those are really the big things. Definitely need to play with the suspension, too. The rear is fully adjustable, I believe. I know that it has a collar for the spring preload, and then there's some kind of adjustment here, although I'm not really sure if that's compression or rebound or both, but we'll figure it out. That I can do something with, I think. The forks, unfortunately, are not fully adjustable. They have compression and rebound on both forks, but no preload, so I'm gonna go play around. If I got a lot of travel at first, I'm sure I can live with it. I did do SoCal Supermoto way back in the day and still had a blast on a DRZ 400 SM that certainly was too soft for me. So just for training purposes, I think it would be good for me to just learn how to work around not having a bike that's set up properly for a little while at least. And then I can always just go and get an aftermarket fork cartridge kit that has adjustable preload and better springs. Or I could just change the springs out that are in the forks now. That would also be a reasonable solution. That's probably the least expensive option. Hee <laughs> hee. Little brapper. Little thumpy thump. Ooh, look at that cloud. Which, I feel like again, probably will not come across very beautifully or as beautifully as it does to me with the GoPro. But nevertheless, I will post it and we will see. Now that we've talked about the bike and taken a look at it, how about we pop in over to virtual reality and the wheelie spot and see if I can still pop a decent wheelie on this thing. It'll be the first time since I looped it, so let's go. And here we are. wasn't half bad considering I haven't been to the virtual wheelie spot in, whew, I don't know like three months two months that's not bad how about we try a second gear clutch up with the new clutch and see how that goes scoot a little bit further back in the seat <laughs> the front wheel comes off the ground more than it did before it just doesn't really come up much at all Still comes up at least. I missed this. Oh, 
That was pretty good. Just gotta remember that right foot, that rear brake every time. Let's go for one more in second gear, going a little bit faster, that might help. Whoa! The bounce got it a bit off the ground. Gotta be careful with that though. I was a little brave. But at least in second gear, it's not just gonna snap back on you since this thing only has 30 horsepower. Alright, I think this has been a pretty good first return to the virtual wheelie spot. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a gentle little click of the like button. Subscribe for more motorcycling content. Going to be back at the track here in just a couple weeks and racing my Daytona 675R in February. Sure to be a good time. In the meantime, 20 V4 and WR250X content coming weekly. Drop a comment below. Do you have a supermoto? Do you love your supermoto? Have you ever ridden a supermoto? Let's talk about it down there. Have a conversation. But thank you again for watching, and I will hope to catch you in the next one. Until then, later.